Hey everybody, I'm Adam. I'm Michael. And today, we're in Michael's noisy fucking basement, and we're going to talk about whatever he wants to talk about, and then I'm going to talk about Christopher Robin, because we're bored in Ohio. You know, I was going to go see that movie. I know you were, but then, and then you I, died no, I glanced, over the weekend. Well, no, that was not good. Uh, sinus infections, people don't do them. Uh, and then I read a review, I get three of them, so which you know I gave you a little bit of discussion about. But, but please, why don't you talk about yours first? I've got about 15 different things I can discuss. I'll talk about a couple of them, I think. Well, hit us with a couple of your things. Or like one of your things, and then we'll go to Chris Rodham, and then we'll come back to you. I, I really wanted to talk about uh, one recent movie, and then the other one uh, that was a while ago, A Ghost Story with Casey Affleck. I don't think I've heard of that. It, uh, it, the imagery of it might, it's an independent film dr- drama, and basically somebody died in the couple thing. It, um, fuck it, it's it's like a year or two old. It, Casey Affleck dies. Okay. And... The entire film, like 80% of it is him walking around a sheet. He's Being a, a ghost? He's a ghost. Interesting. Um, and then I did see Ready Player One. Let's go back to that. Let's, let's save that for the end because I have a feeling you're going to have some hate because you're a purist mm-hmm. on that book. Yes, I am. Um, anyway, Christopher Robin. I know you told me about you with the reviews, but uh, for anybody who doesn't know about Christopher Robin, uh, it basically tells a story of a grown-up Christopher Robin who's been away from his uh, friends in the 100-acre forest, I believe is where they where they live is called, uh, Pooh Bear and Eeyore can and I, all those. Can I ask you one quick question? What? This won't ruin anything, but... Mm-hmm. Oh, just, no, I'm going to spoil. Just from watching the trailer, anyway. though, I'm saying since I didn't watch it, I'm curious. I get the feeling like it was Hook. It's basically Hook, but with Winnie the Pooh. I'll get back to that. Okay. Um, well, yeah, if you've seen the trailer, it's essentially Christopher Robin's grown up, and he basically needs to readjust his priorities in life and realize that it's not all about work and... It's about family, and he shouldn't. It's more about like his influence on his daughter and making his daughter work real hard instead of being a kid. How old is How old is his daughter in it? I think she's well. That's a good question. I have a feeling like ten, maybe. Does she should work real hard at like the sweatshops? You mean? No, like she's gonna go off to boarding school. Yeah, where they belong. Because this is a this is a period piece. It's not modern day. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Um, I didn't really pay attention that much to the trailer. But uh, there will be spoilers, uh, which honestly, I don't think you should worry about spoilers with this movie because something that Mike just said, based on looking at the trailer, it looks like it's like Hook. And you're not wrong. Okay. Actually, when you when I texted you, I said that I liked it. And you said you read some reviews and they just said it was nothing new to see here. My immediate response is, who fucking cares, necessarily? Uh, what's what they say is like seven original stories, and everything else is just a riff on it. Then, yeah. Um, as long as it's done well. I mean, yeah, but but you don't believe that across the board. I mean, mm-hmm. because like for example, the Star Wars stuff we're getting, they're, they're just money grabs. Marvel anymore, everything's just they're just doing them to do them. And most of them just it's the same movie on repeat. Um, for the most part, is what I'm saying. Or are you saying from classic, like a classic, well based story, there's only like seven, and you just yes. kind of okay, like the, you know, there's the hero's journey, the blah blah blah, the blah blah. Like there's only so many riffs on that that you can take. And this, like, it's funny because after you said that to me um, in that text, I thought about it for a second, and Hook was the first thing I thought of that it's basically the same story beats as Hook, where hmm. the young 
when, when they were young, they had this magical world and they grew old and they, they kind of forgot it yeah. and reality set in, but then they're reintroduced to this world and it reminds them of the magic of whatever of childhood and what it's of like childhood. Yeah. Um, and I think if I, I can't remember hook all that well, but I know his son like, uh, is in it too, right? Yeah. His, well, well, no, Robin Williams just, he has two children. Yeah. They're like both of his kids. Like but then both come oh, into yeah, Neverland. They get though. hook takes them. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I think it's more about like, I don't know if like, I, I can't remember what his, uh, relationship with his children were. Um, Oh, it was, he, he worked all the time. He was never home. The kids okay. never spent time with him. And uh, he grew into a, like an, a kind of angry or short-tempered dad. They didn't really like overshoot that and show it to you a lot. But it was like a little moment, I think, where he just got really super frustrated with the kids. And they were upset because they don't see him very much anyway. And kind of, and it was just seeing Ewan McGregor in the trailer. Mm-hmm. God, that's really loud. That's the refrigerator now. Yeah, I unplugged the refri- refrigerator in my house, too. I apo- people, I'm sorry. You know what I should... I don't know. It's just one night, guys. Um, but it reminded me seeing him with his kids and then Pooh sitting, or when he's at the, whatever, he's sitting on that bench or whatever in the trailer. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, Pooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Like, but the thing is, how many times have you seen that story redone? I mean, not like when you go to see a superhero movie. No. You're essentially getting the same movie with a different coat of paint and you're getting that three times a year versus this kind of wholesome remember your childhood but uh, kind of story like and don't don't necessarily project your reality onto your kids let them be kids that's kind of the theme of, yeah. of the the movie you don't see that i mean they don't over i don't feel like that one is like super overplayed especially because like no. the the one that I thought of immediately was Hook and how fucking old is Hook. I love that movie, though. It is. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, but this this is incredibly charming. It's very well done. Ewan McGregor is great. Um, I like that they went with the like how the original kind of illustrations looked for the characters versus the oh, cartoon. Yeah, I agree um, with that. Yeah. They looked fantastic. They're... <laughs> There was one awkward, not with the, them, but they they kind of do a montage of Christopher Robin growing up and how he met his wife and whatever. Hmm. And I feel like they did a little bit of digital de aging oh. on a couple of scenes yeah. just to you know smooth out the wrinkles. And I was like, uh, something feels off. And I, I I I could be wrong. Maybe it was just weird lighting, but it wasn't was Superman like, uh, bad though, right? Oh no no what no no <laughs> nothing is ever. <laughs> mustache removal so, bed. Yeah. Um but so it they they get to present day pretty quickly. They do a, a quick scene in the beginning they're showing Christopher Robin has to go off to boarding school. And from there they do this montage of him growing up and Winnie the Pooh is still like in his tree, kind of just in a way kind of waiting for Christopher to come back, which is kind of sad. Right yeah. off the bat. Yeah, yeah. But this whole montage, like, showing how Chris Robin had to kind of grow up early because while he was at boarding school, his dad died, and he has to come home and kind of be man of the house. Then he ends up being, I assume, in World War One, and all this stuff, and he comes back. <laughs> like, really? Yeah, like, <laughs> it's a whole, like, it was almost like... Uh, oh, it was like Wolverine Origins. Yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> Was Lee Shriver next to him running through the... Yeah, Sabretooth was running on all fours <laughs> in that scene. I saw him in the background. Um, that would be hilarious. That would be hilarious. If, if people would just throw in like little just stuff little, like that. Just instead off of, in the background. Instead of the Wilhelm scream, yeah. they'll just like, oh, we have a war movie. You know what would be funny? See Lee, Lee F. Shriver just fucking galloping <laughs> in the back <laughs> and attacking a Nazi. Um <laughs> But then, okay, so they kind of establish, like, and he's this, uh, I don't know, like, like a, I can't remember what his title was, like an efficiency manager at a uh, suitcase manufacturer. Okay. And they have the stereotypical, you know, snot nose air to the company. It's like, we got to cut, you know, uh, losses somehow. We have to find savings. And... 
you got to work all weekend or else we got to fire people. Uh-huh. So like he has to work and he can't go to the cottage with his wife and his daughter. And then his daughter like is so strung out on like doing her homework. And so this, this is a little bit Jumanji also then. Sure. I, I haven't seen the original Jumanji in a while. Now go on. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the setup. And then of like, for whatever reason, I guess, uh, like Pooh Bear goes to find his friends and he can't find them. So he's like, well, I know who would know how to find them. It'd be Christopher Robin. So he like, he comes out into the real world through the tree to help find his friends to get Chris Robin to help find his friends because Christopher Robin was always the problem solver in those stories. Yeah. And through that process, Chris Robin kind of, you know, he remembers his childhood. Things are great again. And he imparts this onto his daughter. So, won't force her to go to boarding school. So then if Chris Ron was already dead, Pooh would be alone forever. Yeah, that'd be sad. Right? Right? Yeah. Wouldn't it? <laughs> I bet the Pooh sequel is he is dead, and then now Pooh has then, to find his friends again, so he has to go to the sun and pray that he has the same knowledge and intelligence that his dad did, but he's just a dumbass. His, his he's daughter. like Dory. Or Dora the Explorer. And Dora the Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> that is mindlessly anyway um well it's funny because that whole that first bit of montage where they kind of show chris robin's life uh in montage and like in parallel Pooh just kind of day in day out kind of looking out the door and chris robin's not there and and the snow in the winter it reminded me i know you don't watch cartoons but there's an episode of futurama that I is the yeah. saddest fucking thing i've ever seen in my life because <laughs> the premise of that show is the main character got cryogenically frozen and is thawed in the future. But oh. They do an episode that shows that he had a dog back in his time, and that dog waited for him at the fucking sidewalk <laughs> in the same spot, and they played this fucking melancholy-ass music just showing time go by. And it was like, I think so. I was like, if it takes forever... <laughs> It's just this fucking dog looking sad as shit. And I'm pretty sure, like, in that episode, they found, like, his fossilized dog. And that's what brought the whole memory about his dog up. And they were going to try to clone it or something. I was going to ask But then they just showed it, it, like, it didn't work out. And he's like, well, I'm sure he forgot about me long ago. And the whole it ended with literally, like, a minute or two minute montage of that dog just waiting for him to come back (laughs) and just getting sadder and sadder. Like fuck, it's so fucking. And that's why dark. That's why you don't like dogs. That's why you only like cats. Yeah, cattle. Cattle forget about yeah, you. They don't give a shit. They, I mean, they get. They give a shit, but I think they're they? they're quicker to forget. Although you saw, like last uh, last recording, the cat was looking for Kara. Yeah, just meowing. Doesn't like it when you pee. I mean, nothing. You know. It's well, very it's because prepared, the cat protected. thinks I'm being killed in the bathroom. Um. But back back to Chris Robin, uh, I liked it a lot actually. I thought it was very charming. I liked the Ooh, yeah. I will unplug that. Yeah, yeah. This is much better. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I said, it was it was charming. Uh, didn't have a lot of recognizable faces besides. Uh, I mean, had Ewan McGregor. His wife is played by um, it's like what was her name? Haley Atwell. She was in the first Captain America movie. She was Peggy Carter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and it has the guy who plays Minecraft in Sherlock. I don't watch Sherlock. You didn't watch Sherlock? No. With Cumberbatch? No, I like him very much, but I've never watched it. That's surprising to me. Yeah. And one of the first times I get to say, we do a fucking podcast. <laughs> How the fuck have you not watched Sherlock? <laughs> you're only saying that because it's Cumberjack. That's the only reason why you're saying it. Cumberjack? I do. I like to call him Cumberjack. That's like... That's... <laughs> I can't help it. I, I can't... I always call him Cumberjack. That's like the American version of Cumberbatch. Cumberjack. Yeah. Cumberjack. Jack Cumberjack. <laughs> I do. I always call him Cumberjack. Um, God damn it. Um, well, that guy... Well, he was... He, this guy was also in Game of Thrones. The uh, The banking big banking corporation or banking okay people he was like the main guy okay um there's that air conditioning <laughs> and the air conditioning Here we go. kicked in it's gonna be like this guys apologies buckle up um 
and then it had two cameos from uh, some British uh, comedians wow. that were in television shows that just kind of were there. They they weren't like themselves. They just happened to be there. Like the the one guy was from the British Office who played the Dwight type character who was also in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies as the dude with the with the eye that kept popping out. Oh, he plays the Dwight character. And yeah. The, yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. And then there was a guy from the IT crowd that happened to be in it, and I was like, oh, I know both those guys. That's kind of funny. Hmm. And they were just in like a funny like slightly comical scene but that was it they were in it for maybe mm, 45 seconds alright the only complaint that I can actually give this film because I actually really really liked it is the the color palette it's it's kind of that era that World War One, World War Two. so they, they washed it out you yes mean? like yeah. super washed out and for part of it it makes sense because when you know, Chris Robin grows up, I see like that color palette makes sense because he's kind of lost that livelihood of his, you know, when he was a kid, that like that joy and whatnot. Yeah. And they showed like when he does go back to the forest, it was real foggy when he first comes in, which also helps that theme. But as he's remembering and starts to be almost like a kid again, it still stays that drab oh, color. Does it? That doesn't yeah. make sense. It does through the whole movie. And that's the only th- thing that bothered me. I'm like, they could have easily done like a subtle color shift yeah. as he was becoming more childlike again. Yeah. And that would have been that so would make much sense. better. Yeah. Also, have to give him hats off. Perfect casting for Eeyore. It's the dude who played like uh everybody but everybody loves Raymond brother guy oh, that tall guy that's, yeah that's real monotone <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect like like that i like that kara really liked it a lot kara cried she never cries in movies i'm always one that you tear cries up. oh yeah i mean i got a little i got uh, you i mean misty? My, i got a little misty yeah but but like i came out saying like i need to fucking catch myself when we watched coco I didn't see that. I know you didn't. I I mean, streaming tears. Mm. Streaming. And Did Kara's there like a fucking stone. <laughs> Is it because it reminded of your and I's relationship in the movie? And that's why... No, but Winnie the Pooh is like her character as a ch- when she was a kid. No, asshole. I'm talking about when you watch Coco and you had the streams just coming down. Is it because it reminded of... You no. Know, oh. You're not an old Mexican grandma. <laughs> I don't even know what it's about. I, I just, know you don't. I know you don't. Um, no, but yeah. I'm usually the crier if there's like an emotional movie. I, I get emotional in like two films. Braveheart at the very end. Okay. And for some reason, the movie natu- The Natural, Okay. when he hits that fucking home run at the end of the movie, fucking kills me every time. I, I can't understand it. I even say to myself, I don't know why. This would, other than he, you know, he did it. He did that. He did what he he did that need, thing. What, what he needed to do. I don't know, man. Usually, an easy way to get me choked up is cock in your mouth. Well, yeah, that would that would literally get me choked up. You disgusting fuck. <laughs> um, is whenever there's a movie or TV show where somebody really deserves some kind of acknowledgement and they finally get it. Yeah, sure. That fucking kills me every time. It's it, I hate it. I hate it. You don't want them to get it at all. You're like, no, those fuckers. No, no. Oh. I hate the fact that it, it like... Oh, that it gets you. It's like an insta... Like, it's a, crit, a critical hit on my on my heart. Mm-hmm. On my heart. Are you trying to tell me that I need to give you more praise? I think that's what you're getting at. No. No. Subtly. No. Not at all. Although when my friends do go to bat for me, it gets me choked up. That's your best man. I went to bat. You didn't fucking I'm, cry for me. I I was close. I was holding it. I was holding it together because I already cried like a bitch when I was doing my vows. I mean, I couldn't even fucking get them out. It was it was it was beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Talk. Let's let's move on. Uh, I I actually highly recommend Christopher Robin to anybody that's interested. In it seeing sounds it. like a B plus to me, or is it an A minus? 
I would personally give it an A minus. I feel like this could be a movie like Hook that would stick with you. And you'd be like, you know, that was a really good movie. All right, I'll watch it. Um, but let's move on to Ready Player One. Oh, for God, man. I, I, well, I wish um, Casimir lived closer because I know he really liked this movie. I and don't, I honest to God, if you've read the book, and I don't give a shit, the, the people, uh, even Mark, who's, who's also read the book, saw the film in, I think he saw in the theater, and he said, you know, it wasn't that bad, they had a change, no, no, it was fucking stupid. It was really fucking stupid. There's no fucking car chase in this book. There's the, the, the damn thing opens up with a fucking ridiculous car chase with King Kong and all kinds of stupid shit. And I'm, I was trying to be okay with the fact that uh, the whole modernization, which you and I kind of touched on before, they got to put the Halo characters in mm-hmm. now because it's technically the future. And if the story's going to... Fine, add a little bit of that stuff in there, but keep the 80s theme because that's what it was really about because the guy who created all of it was a huge 80s guy. He just that's, That was his thing. Everything revolved around that. They changed. So in, in, the, in the book, the guy, the, di- the guy dies. The guy who created yeah. it dies. And then he, it's the oasis. That's yeah, the dude. virtual world. And he says, there's three hidden keys. Whoever figures out the, uh, the puzzles... And is able to figure out the riddles and all that shit. Control. And gets each key. Then once they have all three keys, they can open up the thing. And then they get full control of the Oasis. It's theirs. Mm-hmm. And all the profits and everything from it. Yeah, they, they, they <clears throat> the, the inheritance. Yes. So there is a bad corporation that is trying to take over. So they've got their... They hire people. All these players to mm-hmm. go in. And so they got, I don't know... 100,000, 200,000 people that are trying to do it. Then you get the purists who are the game nerds. Like, you know, like you and me, for example, we're, you know, we we like to play our games. And uh, not that we wouldn't take the company route. They paid you, they paid you pretty well. They got the best gear. But anyway. Yeah. uh, But the whole, the whole fucking, the whole book is about, it's about 80s nostalgia and the great films that came out then and the, uh, the music and and basically like even D and D back then. I mean, I didn't play a lot of D and D. I mostly thought it was basically a big nerd fest thing. But <laughs> I just didn't get people that got into it too much and would start breathing and like they're a werewolf when they're sitting next to me. Anyway, uh, all that was compiled into this, and these three hidden challenges revolved basically around that one. Like the first one, he the first one you he literally had to go into once he figured out the riddle where the location was it was a whole fucking dungeons and dragons area he had to go through mazes and traps and all this shit to get to even where the key was and then when he got to where the key was there was like a dungeon master in there Mm -hmm. and you had to have a battle they had to play joust against each other this skeletal thing and it was it was everything was evolved on 80s shit Mm -hmm. and I, i fucking love that um this doesn't do any of it every now and then they would play an uh an 80s hit some rock hit for no fucking reason. Uh, they skipped anything that would have been cheap to do, honestly, that followed the story with the pace, and they didn't do any of it. They just did a car race, and then I can't even tell you what the fucking say. Actually, I, I apologize. The last, they did keep the last, the last one, the last, you had to play this one video game. And, um, anyway, that was basically right with the big shield shit or whatever. But, I didn't give a shit about Parsifal, who's the main character. They mm-hmm. didn't spend any time really setting him up as someone you should give a shit about when they blow up where he lives because the bad company mm-hmm. figures out he's getting ahead and they want to get rid of him so they've got more people figuring out to, to get the win first. They blow up his whole place. He wasn't yep. killed a bunch of people. You could mm-hmm. you could give two shits. Right. You didn't, you didn't care. You didn't care about any of the shit. The setups were all dumb as fuck. You didn't care about any I just it was it was I it was terribly done. I'm sorry, it was dumb. It was dumb as fuck. I wouldn't even say, I wouldn't have said it was a Spielberg Spielberg movie because I thought it was so bad. The pacing I, was terrible. I think Spielberg's losing his touch in his old age. I think age. maybe that is what it is. Because his pacing in like Jaws or E.T. or anything you can, anything. The, the, 
the pacing was it was perfect you know it moved from one thing into the next part of the story to the next part of the story and this one was just kind of pushed and chugged along to the next to the next to the next you didn't feel like there was any angst to to accomplish anything you didn't give a shit about any of the characters you know i don't know it, it, it and i went into it thinking it was going to be a shit fest and it was honestly worse than i thought it was going to be by the way claire and my kids love it claire read the book mm-hmm. and she's like no it was actually pretty good no it's not <laughs> i think you're very averse to change that is not true. <laughs> well, oh, sorry, oh. I'm knocking into my mic. Uh, part like so, the, there were vast changes to basically modernize, and you gotta consider when that guy made the book. It was f- for that audience of the time. Okay, but something. The, uh, well, is hold simple. on, hold All on, right, hold on. I'm sorry, go ahead. The audience has shifted. And the gamers out there right now, they don't know fuck all about the 80s. So but they're going to change because they're, he's not like. It doesn't matter. You would still know Atari games. You would know those games, man. I don't think so. Then I don't give a fuck about those people that are fucking 15 and going to see it now. You're a dipshit for not knowing what Frogger is or something like that. Fuck you. You, you shouldn't play any video <laughs> games. You don't know what the, what the. See, this is why you're not a Hollywood executive. Because they, well, one, I don't think this movie, like, I don't think it was considered a success, and probably because more to, to uh, flaws in the movie rather than anything are bad marketing. Um, you know what? No, no, no. That's if they did a World War One or World War Two movie today. You're trying to tell me they should upgrade the weapons so that they work more accurately in a way that no, somebody this time and age would fucking know how to use it. history. That's a piece of actual history. Wow. You're talking about a piece of fiction that well. was designed for entertainment for a people at a time. World War One wasn't designed for, and glorious for, bastards. for the people at the time. And Glorious Bastards, they kept all the same shit that would have been used at that time. And there yeah, was a, that's historical fiction. It's fiction. Historical fiction. No. N- no. no. <laughs> little California Look, there. All I'm California trying to, with a K. Little Brad a good, Pitt. That is a great fucking movie. I fucking love it. I do that all the time. If Kara does something that... <laughs> It bothers me. I'm like, no. I'd love to see her face when you did that. She looked at me like, what the fuck are you doing? All I'm saying is this. uh, If you read the book, I think you'd understand my my point of it. You don't have to make it an 80s movie. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that uh, the simplicity, although, like, you know, those older games, they're really fucking hard. Like, oh, yeah. Frogger gets really fucking hard, for example, or, you know, any of these. They, they, Battletoads. Whole, Battletoads. Which that's, are, that's past, the, that's past it the was, 80s, but. It was past it, but, but the Battletoads are in this fucking movie. Yeah, as they should be. Well. Because they're the fucking I best. I was kind of okay with it, with that point. I was really not okay with 20 Halo Captain, uh, what are the fuck he's called? Master Chief. Chief. Master Chief running around. Anyway. Um, but they didn't keep. Uh, what you it, thought it's was a, it's about, critical it's things. About a court, like the, it's about a game, right? The virtual reality of the game and how we escape ourselves in our shitty lives. That's what the, really the book is about and how, then now how it's gone over the top, right? The, the, the core of the, of the book is based on the core games. Like Dungeon, everyone knows what a Dungeon and Dragons thing is. Everyone, you know, console games, arcade games, you know how they work. Mm-hmm. But they didn't keep any of it. They, they just, they went to car races and stupid, dumb sh- shit. It just got, just got quiet. I'm gonna take it quiet. They put the fucking shining in the movie. I know they did, and that's not in the book either. Although it was interesting, the way I they heard did it was it. done actually very well. It was done well. You could obviously tell that they took actual footage, yeah, um, and then just kind of mapped over it. It, they yeah. did it well, but I could tell where they put somebody in front of something to block something or someone. Yeah. I could see those. So, I mean, because I've seen the movie so many times. I love that movie. It was interesting the way they did it. I, I'm, gonna, I'm going to I'll unplug it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I'm not like kidding it. you. I would give the movie a, I'm not going to go D minus. I'll say a solid D. 
it, no character development. There's no emotional. Lastly, let me just say this. The parcel character, the reason why you gave a shit about the guy so much is because he didn't have parents. He was ra- being raised by his aunt and his, and his her asshole boyfriend. It was a total abusive fuck. They had no money. They basically lived in a trailer park that was stacked trailers. Okay? He had no money. He was playing on a fucking rig that he put together from a bunch of trash. And then he slowly makes a name for himself. And he slowly, over time, wins these keys. And they give him credits. And he can now afford to buy himself shit. So when he got that shit, it's the first time he ever had anything that was actually new. And it meant something. They... All that feeling that Spielberg is really good at doing years ago to show you this emotional impact of this kid or finally getting like up, you know, they're out mm-hmm. of poverty and shit. Fucked it all to hell. You, you didn't give a shit about this kid. Do you, do you have some personal affinity for this? What do you mean? I grew up in a trailer park. Is that what you're trying to say? I'm just saying like... The way you were talking about it and how the things that you specifically pointed out are really kind of story points and trauma. <laughs> You're such an asshole. <laughs> no, no. And I know that some of that's based off of reality. So I feel like I feel like this like that character just hit home for you and you have this this affinity for it and you can't detach yourself from it because you are Percival. <laughs> I am Parcival. <laughs> <laughs> You're an asshole. No. Now, I, I understand like a lot of a lot of people that I've overheard talking about it that are around your age who probably read the book when it came out. I don't mean that as a fucking your old thing. Yeah. But I'm just saying people who read it when it came out and who are of your age range right now sure. didn't like most people out here didn't care for it. Yeah. Younger folk they got to see all the people they're playing as on their video games in it. And they're like, oh, cool. Enjoy it more. Yeah. And they're taking it as a popcorn flick when you thought it should have been more it's developed. A, yeah. And that's that's no excuse for popcorn flicks like that they don't have to have character development. Because if, when they do, usually they're more impactful. Right. But sometimes you out there and you just be like, oh, give me explosions. I mean, that's how Michael Bay has a fucking career. <laughs> that's exactly right. But, Starship Troopers is just explosions and gore. Which... That book is fantastic. You know, I've never read it. I've, I, it's on my list, and I keep reading something else. I've been meaning to read it forever. The like the whole bug planet bit, yeah, is literally like mm, this little tiny bit of the book. Mm. And these marines are badass motherfuckers, and like mech suits and shit. I've heard. They, are, well, like uh, mech ish. I don't think they're not. They're not really bulky. It's more like um, oh, I, you know what I heard? Like modern uh, exoskeleton type the, suits. Where the it's, day after tomorrow, which you've not sure. That's yeah. no, okay. I watched that with the Tom Cruise. Yeah. Okay. I, I couldn't remember. I didn't remember if you watched that or not. Yeah. I'm, and they should have just kept the, the original title that was like murder, die, repeat. Yeah. Because nobody understood what the fuck edge of tomorrow was. I was really good though. I, I was surprisingly good. Yeah. Although I don't agree with the ending. I'm all right with that. They could have ended the movie five minutes earlier and it would have been better. I'm all right with that. Um, we've hit time. Let me just say real quick about a ghost story since I mentioned it. It's just don't see the film. <laughs> okay. um, I love indie dramas. Love them uh, very much. Mm-hmm. This is, there's literally no reason in the world to watch the movie. Guy dies. He watches his girlfriend. Typical. He's just standing around. He literally stands around in a fucking sheet and watches and it does montage shit. She eventually leaves. People move into the house. He gets pissed because it's not his girlfriend there anymore. They move out because he poltergeist the area. Like he just so suddenly it's, like it's Beetlejuice, basically. But he doesn't talk or anything. He just in a sheet with two black eyes, just grabs shit and breaks dishes and shit. Other people move in. House gets wrecked. By the way, this movie's over two hours long. Oh fuck! House gets wrecked, rebuilt. All of a sudden, well, his I'm sorry. There's one thing before the girlfriend leaves. She puts a note in the crack of a wall. And paints over a piece of paper. She wrote something on. He didn't get to see what it was. Sticks it in there. He's in a sheet hand doing this. Half the movie. To try to get it out. Try to get it out. House gets broken down. Motherfucker can be corporeal enough to pick up plates and fucking And he can pass through walls. And he can pass through walls. Well, that's that's what I would expect a ghost can do. Right, exactly. But if he can literally pick up a plate 
How can he not scrape that bitch up? How can he not just be like... I think they're trying to say his nails couldn't go through the... I don't fucking know. Anyway, they tear down the house. He never gets to see the note. And then all of a sudden, um, I won't even mention the fact that he sees another ghost person in another house. And they talk... you literally just mentioned it. They literally talk with title sequence that comes up. Look, they'll go like this. They lift their right hand. The person lifts their right hand as they turn and look out the window at each other in each other's house. And all of a sudden, they'll go... It'll type out high. There's no words. There's no movements at all. Like They're just a staring at film. It's like a silent film. They stay. They say really dumb shit. I'm waiting for somebody who I don't know. Then they just turn around and walk away. Once the house dies, for some reason, <laughs> you want me to shut the fuck up? I'm holding my hand up. Yes. You're, you're a ghost and I'm a ghost. Yeah. My, my little subtitle says, do you watch him get naked? <laughs> I, I mean, right? I mean... Mm-hmm. Not if it's your wife, or your girlfriend. You've seen that too many times. You wait for the new people to move in. Oh well, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did yeah. You see that guy's balls? <laughs> They're weird looking. They are weird looking. <laughs> um, but then all of a sudden, because of this, this, this moment happens. Time reverses itself, and he goes back to the 1800s, standing in the same spot. For That's some weird. reason, there's a prairie, or a, there's a small family that comes up in a wagon. Starts to put the stakes down for the home there. They get killed by Indians. And this is, tink, 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 this moves on. He's staying there. Apartment buildings and shit, whatever else. Eventually, he's back in the house again mm-hmm. as the ghost. Then he sees himself with a girlfriend walk in. And it repeats. And then there's like five ghosts in there. All him. And it starts going, you're starting going, what the fuck? What the fuck is going on? And then... While the other ghosts are walking around, he's still over. And this movies just keep going. Finally, and I knew this was going to happen, he's able to just, because she he waited for her just to put the piece of paper in before the paint dried, mm-hmm. and immediately goes over there and is able to get it out. And as soon as he opens it, she drops, he died. Move like it. he's able to move on? Uh, yep. Because he didn't go in the door at the beginning. There's a door that, sh- 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 you know, the glow oh, that was the... when he was in the hospital and didn't go into it. Welcome to the afterlife. Don't ever see this movie. Like, there's no reason for it. It sounds awful. It was fucking... Just like your fridge turning on. I also um, want to remind everyone we're at Mike's house. That this episode is brought to you by all the noises of his fucking basement. I apologize. These are again. the sounds of non-commitment. <laughs> One time I asked you to record over here. Where we usually record, my house, I go through the effort of turning off the air conditioning, unplugging the refrigerator, opening the door so the cat doesn't have to go through the little cat door and make a stupid sound every time she has to take a shit. My daughter is upstairs, not even moving off her bed because she's afraid she's going to make noise. And we have airs and refrigerators going off. You should just let her go run wild. I mean, I'm sorry. It can't get any worse. How many times do you want me to say I'm sorry? I, I don't know. All right, you know what? So till next fucking time. Whoa! Do you oh. have anything going on? No. We always do this bit. No. You don't have shit going on. Well, I just finished. You that just finished painting. that painting. You should fucking post that as a blog post instead of me doing all the fucking blog. Posts. I'll be honest with you. I forget to post. You have to remind me. You've posted once. You have to remind me. Now you have to remind me how to sign back in. I don't remember. Let's talk this offline. People need to hear this stupid shit. So you finished a painting. It looks great. Thank you. Me, I'm not doing shit. I'm going to Michigan this weekend for a wedding, and whoopty whoopty. <laughs> Why didn't you ask me? I don't don't have anything creative going on. To the wedding? Yeah. You don't know Rochelle? I'm a fucking pastor. They got somebody. (laughs) 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 All right. Until next time, folks, and hopefully it'll be a lot quieter. It won't be. (laughs) We're recording another one. Yes. Here (laughs) after this. I'm not know I don't know when you're gonna hear it, because I think we might bank it, but Get ready for more fucking sounds. Continue. Until Continue next time, with the goodbyes. Bank that spank. Because we're bored in Ohio.
fuck did you say? You said spank it, and I went and went with the bank and spank bank. Spank that bank? <laughs> you sound like you're in the government. <laughs> Those fucking corrupt pieces of shit. <laughs> they are. My nipples hurt. <laughs>